All right, gang, so this video is going to walk through some of the key kind of ways that we break down latitude and longitude, absolute location, the global grid. So in this video, I'm gonna go through some of the main lines of latitude and longitude, and then we're gonna look at a few different examples about how you give latitude and longitude for a certain place, and then how you use a set of coordinates, that is latitude and longitude, to locate a place. So this is just gonna be kind of a quick overview of all the main skills that you will need related to latitude and longitude. So if we take a look at our world map, that we have down here in front of us. Um, what we really want to do the first time, anytime really, that we are looking to locate a place is we want to get our bearings, right? We want to get oriented a little bit. And so the first thing that we want to do is we want to find our compass. And we can see our compass is located down here. I'm just going to highlight that for us a little bit. But we want to find our compass so that we can figure out which way is quote unquote up or which way is north, right? North, east, south, west, never eat soggy. Worms, yeah, you all got it by now, north, east, south, and west. And then once we've located our compass and we're oriented a little bit, it's time to identify some of the main lines of latitude and longitude. Some of them are maybe a little bit more important than others because everything kind of stems and feeds off of those. So let's start with our lines of latitude. That is, of course, our lines of flatitude. And the most important line of latitude that we want to locate, or the most important parallel of latitude that we want to locate, is the line that is at zero degrees, which is this one right here. And that line at zero degrees, that is known as the equator. And what the equator does, and I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of mark that all the way across, but the equator helps us divide into northern and southern hemispheres, or northern and southern halves. And if we were to look on the globe, um, which is more three-dimensional, we can see that equator, again, running between the northern and southern hemispheres, right at zero degrees, separating our northern hemisphere, where are we, which is where we are here, compared to our southern hemisphere down here. So that is our main line of latitude that we want to find, the equator at zero degrees. And then now that we've got our equator and we've separated our north and our south, we need to find our main line of longitude or our main meridian of longitude. And I'll explain in a second why we call those lines long um, and the lines of latitude, why we call them parallels. But here we are at zero degrees and we're going to call that the prime meridian which is kind of like the vertical equator uh, or the equator's cousin. And so there is our prime meridian running all the way down at zero degrees longitude. And if we were to look actually here on a globe and we were to kick it on over to Europe, hang on, where did we go? We passed it, where are, no we didn't. Where am I? Ah, there we are. At Europe, sorry about that, we can see um, our main line, and I'm just gonna kind of step up here so that you can see that a little bit better. But here we have our main line of longitude or the prime meridian, and we can see that it runs all the way through from the North Pole all the way down to the South Pole all the way right there. And that is our prime meridian. Now I mentioned that sometimes um, lines of latitude are called parallels of latitude, and that is because they're always flat, right? So here is our equator. And as we go north of it, we see that every line of latitude runs around the world and it is flat. So as you get closer to the top here, as we get closer, you know, to the North Pole, we can see that it, you know, it's a smaller circle to get around compared to if we were to go a little bit further south or compared to if we were to try and circumnavigate or the circumference of the globe at the equator. And so those are our lines of latitude or lines of flatitude or our parallels of latitude. And then we again, we have our meridians of longitude, which go from the North Pole to the South Pole. And they're called longitude because all the lines are long because all of them go from the North to the South. It doesn't matter where you are. They start at the North Pole and they all head down to the South Pole. So all of those meridians of longitude are a little bit longer. So we've located our equator at zero degrees. We've located the prime meridian also at zero degrees. And our prime meridian, of course, it separates the world into Eastern and Western hemispheres. So now that we've got those main lines of latitude and longitude, there's a couple others that we want to take a look at. Um, there's the one at 23 and a half degrees north latitude. So we start at zero and we start working our way up until we get to 23 and a half degrees north. And once we get there, we're going to go ahead and label that. That is the Tropic of 
cancer. And that line goes all the way across, and cancer is referring to, in this case, the zodiac constellation. And we also see that there's actually one at 23 and a half degrees south, where we have the Tropic of Capricorn. So those are two other kind of important lines of latitude. They distinguish the tropic zone around the world. And then we have another one at 66 and a half degrees north latitude. And there we have the Arctic Circle. And if we were to follow that all the way across, and then we also have one at 66 and a half south latitude, and there we have the Antarctic Circle. And if we were to actually look at those on a globe, right, we have our equator, but then of course we have our tropic zones down there in, you know, right about here at 23 and a half north, and right about here at 23 and a half south, kind of the meat of the globe, the tropical zone, then we got kind of at the poles, the Arctic and the Antarctic. So those are our main lines of latitude and longitude. Now, how do we use latitude and longitude? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's skip it ahead here. And we've got ourselves oriented with our prime meridian going north and south, separating in our eastern and western hemispheres. Then we've got our equator that runs east to west, but it separates our northern and our southern hemisphere. And let's say we wanted to locate the city that was located at 47 degrees north and 71 degrees west. So to find it, first we need to again find our equator, and we're looking for 47 degrees north, so we start at zero, and we keep going north until here we hit 45, then here we hit 60, so we need a little use, uh, some number sense, and we need to estimate a little bit, but we know that our 47 is going to be a little bit of Scotia above 45, so we know it's going to be somewhere along this line of latitude, a little bit above it at 47 degrees north, and then 71 west. So we start at 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. So we know, again, using number sense, that 71 is going to be somewhere in between here, between 75 and 60, and we know it's going to be a little bit less than that. And so we, again, we find 47 north, we find 71 west, and then we bring them all together and what do we see? Well we see Quebec City uh, located there in Canada. So our next one that we would have then is 38 degrees south and 145 degrees east. So again we're starting at the equator and we know that we're going to go south this time and we're looking for 38 degrees south. So we go all the way down. We know it's going to be somewhere between 30 and 45. We got to use our number sense. I'm just going to leave a finger there. We got 38 south and 145 east this time. So again, we find our prime meridian, we go east, and we are looking for 145 degrees east. So you know it's going to be somewhere here-ish. And if we were to go ahead and see where these two intersect at 38 south and 145 east, if we were going to follow those together, we would see down here, we would be going down under to Melbourne. Australia. Sorry about my Australian accent. I'm going to put that on the shelf for a later date. Um, and so that's how that looks on a relatively straight square grid map. It's pretty straightforward. It's a lot like Battleship. We did that activity in class. But again, you always um, kind of the quick down and dirty version, find the equator to get yourself oriented north and south, find the prime meridian to get yourself oriented east and west, and then once you've got those lines, then it's just a matter of keying in or cluing in um, on your set of coordinates. So that would be how you'd go about doing that. Let's take a look at a slightly different map. Now we've got one of North America here. Uh, showing us Canada and the United States. And let's just say, for example, that we wanted to um, get the absolute location of Washington State. Now, I know that Washington State happens to be right here, but now instead of actually um, finding it based on coordinates, we're going to go the other way. And so I know that Washington State is right here, but I need to figure out what are the coordinates of Washington State. Well, there is no equator on this map, um, and there isn't even a compass on this map, but I notice on the edges, we've got our lines of latitude at thir or 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. It gets a little tricky on the edges of this map because it's taking really kind of this round three-dimensional globe, right? It's taking this unwieldy thing and it's trying to put it down on a flat sheet of paper. And so we don't have a flat grid like we do here where things get all stretched out. We've got some curved lines, but we're going to talk about Washington State, which is right here. And we know that Washington State is somewhere between this line, this curved line, and this curved line. Again, notice the lines they curve because the world curves. We're not going to go at 50 and go straight across um, because that's something entirely different. We're not going to start at 40 and go straight across, but we got to curve that line. And so we see here's Washington. And if we were to follow that curve out, we'd see that it's, you know, somewhere right in there. -ish. And if here's 40, here's 50, we could probably call that 48. 
give or take a degree. And then we also need to figure out, well, where is the middle of it? And we see, well, there's this line here, and it kind of runs right in through it, and we see 120. So we could say that Washington is at 48 degrees north and 120 degrees west. We could say that's the absolute location of Washington. Well, now maybe we want to try another one. Let's try it with, oh, I don't know, how about Louisiana? And so Louisiana looks like a boot down here. Going to just kind of indicate that on our map, but there is Louisiana for us. And um, I realized that you didn't see 120. Sorry about that uh, with Washington. Um, but here is that line at 120. That's how I figured that out. Let's take a look at Louisiana now. And so Louisiana is down here, and we see it's somewhere right along this line of latitude. And we see that line's 30, so we could estimate that Louisiana is maybe at 31 north. And then we need to figure out its line of longitude, and so it's somewhere in between you know, these two lines here, and if we were to work all the way down, we see here's 90 west, but you know, it's a little bit over here, so we'll call it 31 north and 92 degrees west. So that's how you might um, go the opposite way. You start with a location, and then you work yourself backwards. So for example, um, let's take another example on this map, and let's this time let's go with a set of coordinates at 28 degrees north and 82 degrees west. So here's again our lines of latitude, 10, 20, 30, and we're looking for 28, so it's going to be just under 30 degrees north, and we're looking for 82 west, and so down at the bottom we have 80, 90, 100, so we can assume that, oh, there it is, there's 70, so here's 70, here's 80, and we're looking for 82, and we see here we have Florida at roughly 28 degrees north and 82 degrees west. So there's a couple examples for you with a curved map. Let's look at a couple more curved map examples because they can get a little bit trickier. Um, and so as we go ahead and as we look at, I'll see if I can Okay, um, and let's say for example we wanted to give the absolute location of London right here. And so again, we need to find our north-south coordinate. And with London, here's 40, here's 50, here's 60. So we see it's just above 50. So we could call London maybe 52 degrees north. And then we got to figure out its longitude. Well, lo and behold, the prime meridian runs almost directly through London. Not quite, but for our purposes, we could call it roughly 52 north and then zero degrees, not east or west. We're just going to call it zero, um, even though it's just a skosh to the west. You, we're going to just call it zero. Or maybe we want to get the coordinates for Lisbon, Portugal, down here. And as we take a look again, we need to find north and south. And so if here's 50, here's 40, so we know it's going as we head further south, those numbers are decreasing as we get closer to the equator. And so we see that Lisbon, um, if that's 40, we'll call that, oh, I don't know, how about like 38 degrees north? And then we need to find here's zero, here's 10. So we see Lisbon is in between zero and 10. It's pretty close, but it's not quite at 10. So let's call it nine degrees west. And there you have it. There is a pretty in-depth overview on how to calculate and figure out latitude and longitude. And if I could stress anything, it's to make sure first orient yourself with your line of latitude to figure out north and south, and then make sure from there you find your line of longitude. Um, and then be mindful of those curved lines that you see on your map. Be mindful of those curved lines. Don't just go straight across because the world is not straight. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope you're doing well. Talk to you later. See you.